Hey, we're the Masters of Boredom, where nothing is off the table, and gee golly gosh, have we got a surprise for us. What? Don't you mean we have a surprise for them? Nope. A real, honest-to-God game publisher came down from heaven on a steed all in white and delivered unto us this. We got a game from a publisher? How did that go down? I don't know! Well, no, that's not true. It went a little something like this. Aaron. Aaron. Master of Boredom. Yes, sir, Lord. Oh, stop groveling. All you reviewers with your sucking up and I'm not worthy. Sorry, my lord. And don't apologize. What are you doing now? Averting my eyes, oh lord. Well, knock it off. Right. Aaron, Master of Boredom, you shall undertake a quest of my choosing. Good idea, O oh Lord! Of course it's a good idea! You will play this expansion to Orleans and get a review up within three months. A blessing! A blessing from the Lord! This seems implausible. That's because it is! I feel like you embellished a little bit. Does that mean something awesome? If so, then yes. Well, before we can review the expansion, we have to review Orleans. Not a problem. <laughs> well, grab your coconuts and let's get on with it! Orleans is what happens when worker placement games and pool building games have a steamy run-in at Castle Anthrax. Pool building was wearing exciting underwear. And they have a baby that effectively combines the two mechanisms into a game about building your economic empire across medieval France. Players will recruit more workers, build technology to make actions more efficient, acquire goods, build trading posts, and accrue influence as they all struggle to be the dominant brand in Orleans. But. Before we get started, I want to reiterate something. Our opinions are our own, and as excited as we are to get our first ANYTHING sent to us by a publisher, we will remain unbiased and professional. <laughs> as professional as a pair of morons who make poop jokes can be, anyway. Let's walk you through how the game works. Each player gets their own player board, they get starting character tiles, seven wooden cubes of their color, one wooden merchant token of their color, and ten wooden trading post tokens. And of course, you get your own sweet cloth bag. So soft. Again, but lower. So soft. Setting up the game board is a bit laborious, but well worth your time. Take your colored cubes for each player and put them at the beginning of each of the tracks, including the bottom development track. Sort through the sea of available character tiles, or give each of the seven delicious flavors its own baggie if you're smart, and place them in the respective locations on the side of the board. While you're at it, place the technology tiles on the board as well. You may need to remove some of each if you're playing with less than four players. Next, set up the citizen tiles in their spaces on the boatman track, the knight track, and the three on the development track. And since the player with the most trading posts wins at the end of the game, we always put one citizen on the map. The remaining citizens go on the beneficial deeds board. More on that later. Take the events tiles and look for and remove the pilgrimage tile with a lighter back. Shuffle the rest and put the pilgrimage tile you removed on top of the stack, putting them all in the event space. Next, separate your building tiles into level 1 and level 2 piles. No need to shuffle them. Finally, pick a starting player. The game recommends the youngest player be first, but we prefer drawing straws from a box of broken razor blades. This is how real gamers do. And that's it. There's nothing else tedious to do. Well, there is one thing. The goods tiles. Oh, well, I mean, I'll, I'll just take these and put them... Ah. You have to place them on the board face down randomly. Ugh. Fine. Done. 
We're ready to play now, right? Now you gotta flip them all face up. What? Why, what? You just had me put them all upside down just to flip them all over again? What kind of monster are you? It's done. They're all face up now. Can we play? Absolutely. Thank you. But first... Done! You have to place your worker in Orleans. We play now! Okay. So, turns have seven phases, and they are as follows. First, flip over the top event of the events pile. This tells everybody what rule you have to follow for that round, or what event will take place at the end of the turn. Some are beneficial, but some not so much. Next is the census. Check the farmer track and see who's in the lead and who's fallen behind. If there's a single player in the lead, they get a coin. If there's a single player in last, they lose a coin to the bank. Ties in either case means this does not happen. And in a two-player game, the player behind doesn't lose anything, but the player ahead still gets paid. Phase three is to draw your followers. Check your position on the night track to see how many character tiles you can draw from your bag at this point. You'll place them in the market spaces at the bottom of your player board. Please note, if your market is full, you cannot draw anymore, even if the night track would allow you to do so. Next phase is the planning phase, where you'll distribute your workers from the market spaces to the different locations on your player board in order to activate those actions in the next phase. Note that you can only do actions if all the required character slots are filled, but you may place a character in an incomplete location and leave him there for a future round. You may also leave them in the market to be used next turn. Just be sure you have space for all the character tiles you could draw. Best part about this phase is everybody can usually do it at the same time. But if one player's choices depend on another, you may place workers in turn order. Phase 5 is the action phase, where you carry out the plans you made in the previous phase. You choose the order in which completed actions are executed, but you do not have to take an action if you do not wish to. You can simply leave the tiles there for a future round if you want. Unlike the previous phase, this is done in turn order, one action at a time, or you may pass. If you pass, you are out of the round. Place all the used workers back in your bag. So soft. Phase six is time to resolve the event tile. Fortunately, you've had all turn to mitigate any negative consequences or take full opportunity of a beneficial boon. Whatever the case, the effect of the event tile happens now, unless it was the pilgrimage. That's the only event that takes place in phase five instead. And finally, phase seven is simple. Pass the start player shield to the next person to your left and a new round begins. That sounds simple enough. Well then let's get crazy. I mean complicated. I mean not really complicated, simple enough for almost anyone to follow but more complicated than we previously stated and is not easy to explain in a short sentence. Just get on with it! So let's talk about all the actions you can take. First there's the farmhouse. This requires a boatman and a craftsman and I guess they train a new farmer for you because the alternative is that they make a baby and tell it to become a farmer his whole life. Add a farmer tile to your bag from the board and then move up one space on the farmer track and take the corresponding good from the available supply. Please note that if the supply runs out of a good, you get nothing. Next location is the village, where do you get village people? Why am Just tell them what it does! The village requires a farmer, a boatman, and a craftsman, and you may acquire your choice of three different characters. If you take a boatman, you'll move up on the boatman track and you'll take the amount of coins listed on that space. If you take a craftsman, you'll move up on the craftsman track and you'll get a technology tile. At the end of the phase, you may place this on any location to cover any character requirement, and that requirement is permanently filled, making that action easier to activate in future turns. Your first tactile must go on a farmer requirement, but after that, any space will do as long as 
there isn't already a tech tile on that action, and you may not put one on an action that only requires a single character, and lastly, you may not place one on a monk space. The last character you can hire from the village is the traitor. You mean it isn't the policeman? We already did a village people joke! Take a trader and throw him into your bag and move up on the trader track. Your first step on that track allows you to build any level 1 place tile you wish. Look through them and pick the one you want and plant that sucker next to your player board. That is yours and yours alone. Only you can take the action or gain the benefit of that particular place. Moving up additional spaces on the trader track allows you to select from level 1 or level 2 place tiles. Next, the university. If you'd like to get your knowledge on, you'll need a farmer, a craftsman, and a trader. Gain a scholar to your bag and advance on the scholar track. This allows you to propel yourself along the development track. If you cross a space with a citizen tile, take it. If you pass a space with a coin amount on it, you get that many coins from the bank. The stars on the track indicate how many points your citizen tiles and your trading posts are worth at the end of the game. So the farther along you are, the better. Next, the castle. If you are fortunate enough to not run into the knights who say, Nee! You can instead hire a knight who says, Yes, boss! Activate it with a farmer, a boatman, and a trader, and you may add a knight to your bag and advance on the knight track. As we said before, the farther along this track, the more characters you draw during the draw phase. There's also a citizen tile for the military-minded among you, so you might want to advance quickly. Up next, the monastery. As long as they aren't in the middle of a pilgrimage, a scholar and a trader can convince a monk to get wild and crazy. Add a monk to your bag. And these are some Shaolin monks or something, because they can literally fill any requirement at a moment's notice. They count as wilds and can be used on any space except the town hall, which we'll get to soon. Hey, remember that map? The one on the board that we literally have said nothing about? Well, now it's time to explain that. Across the top of your player board are three locations. The ship, the wagon, and the guild hall. Activate the ship with a farmer, a boatman, and a knight, and you can move your merchant along any blue road on the map. Activate the wagon with a farmer, a trader, and a knight, and you can move your merchant along any brown road on the map. In either case, you stop at the next village or city on the road, and if there was a goods tile or two on that road, you may take one. If there were two, you may choose either one, but the other must be left behind. The third space along the top is the guild hall, which requires a farmer, craftsman, and another knight. This action allows you to build a trading post in the city that your merchant is currently in. So I'll just go ahead and build my trading post in sunny downtown. Uh, I don't think so. Back off, buddy. Uh, other than Orleans, only one trading post can be built in each city, and I've already built here in sunny downtown. Wait a minute, wait a minute. An entire city doesn't have room for more than one trading post? How does that work? Hello! Can you tell me whose city is this? This is the city of Guy La Montechard. Go forth and tell your master that we would like to build a trading post in his fair city. Uh, well, I'll ask him, but I don't think he'll be very keen. Uh, he's already got one, you see. What? He says he's already got one. Are you sure you've got one? Oh yes, I've seen it. It is uh, quite nice. I told him you already got one. Yeah, that was productive. Anyway, there's just two spaces left to explain, and they're both smack dab in the middle. The scriptorium lets you move one space on the development track. This is important, as hiring every scholar you can will not get you to the end of that track. And finally, the town hall lets you permanently assign one of your hired followers, not one of your starting four, to perform some good deed for the county. In return, you'll get money or advance on the development track, and if you manage to fill the last spaces of a task, you'll also gain influence in the form of a citizen tile. Well, it wouldn't be France unless there was torture. CJ! I mean, let's talk about torture. 
Every time you must pay something and cannot do so, you must undergo torture. This sounds like the game is going to break out in Iron Maiden and juice you like an orange, but in reality it just means that you have to pay the cost another way. Like losing a trading post either from your supply or from the board. Losing a follower randomly drawn from your bag. Keep in mind your starting dudes are immortal, so if you draw one of them, you'll have to draw again. You can also move backwards on the development track, but you're not allowed to move past a space with coins. You can also lose a goods tile, a place tile, or a technology tile. All items lost through torture are removed from the game. The game ends after the round in which the final event tile is revealed. The player with the most trading posts on the map gains the final citizen tile. But nobody gets it if there's a tie. So how does the end game scoring work? Well, I hope you've got 10 minutes, pencil, paper, graphing calculator, or our Ken Jennings. Coins are one point, goods tiles are worth one to five points, add all of your property up. Then add your citizen tiles to your total trading posts and multiply that number by the highest value star on the development track that you've reached. Add that to your property score and that's your total score. If there's a tie, the player who's furthest on the development track wins. If there's still a tie, go to France and ask them who won. So, tedious setup aside, Orleans is a challenging worker acquisition and execution conundrum. There's a lot of moving parts here. No, really, there's a track where you actually buy gears. My very first playthrough of this game, finding a successful strategy was absolutely bewildering. I found myself at the end of the development track with no trading posts or citizen tiles to multiply by, and a metric ton of followers who were worth absolutely nothing, and I lost handily. I was honestly hesitant to give this game a second go, but I'm glad that I changed my mind. Now that I had a better grasp of the scoring mechanic, I understood that Orleans demands that you have a plan, and I enjoyed myself a lot more the second time around. I, too, misunderstood Orleans at first. After my first play, I really thought the game was wildly imbalanced. After learning there was a building that made scholars into wilds just as good as monks, I thought for sure it was an overpowered strategy to buy that building and just hammer out scholars to do whatever I wanted. My second and third plays disabused me of that notion in a hurry. I got my ass handed to me, and I realized that perhaps I had just gotten lucky my first time around. Or maybe I'd made better choices. The game forces you to straddle multiple strategies at a time. You can't simply pursue one thing the whole game. You can briefly concentrate on adding farmers to your crew, but you also have to figure out how best to use those farmers, because a bag full of them will only slow you down. At the same time, there are a wealth of options thanks to the multiple ways to score. So if Aaron is cutting a swath through France planting his stupid blue trading posts everywhere, you can instead build a brewery, and a tailor shop, and a winery, and crank out goods and money instead. There's so many options and different buildings available to purchase on top of that, so while single strategies won't work, there are a ton of complex strategies to pursue which lend this game a staggering amount of depth and replayability. For me, this is a game that feels rewarding even when I lose, because I've spent the entire time building this sophisticated, complicated worker placement engine to crank out goods or coins or trading posts or citizen tiles, and with minimal interference, but just enough to slow your opponents a bit. You can't stop them, and they can't stop you. And seeing and feeling that engine start to kick into higher gear as the rounds go on is probably my favorite thing about this game. That sense of accomplishment. You put it together. And wow, look at it go! The game boards are highly detailed and colorful without being distracting. The layout of the main board is simple and well organized. But if you're looking for a specific city in France, you may need a magnifying glass or a GPS. All of the cardboard is thick and durable, even the event tiles are aesthetically pleasing, and I find it easy to get sucked in. You might even find yourself using a French accent! Not if you want to keep your friends. I love the look of this game. It married old school medieval style art with modern sensibilities and a fantastic use of color. 
every bit of this game is a treat for the eyes. CJ and I argued about the cover art. I feel like it doesn't accurately portray what you do in the game, and he's like, well, what game really does? And he's irritatingly right. But I feel like it should. Still, it's just as pretty as anything else. There's no wasted space inside. Zero. And can I talk about this? It is such a small thing. But putting this information, how many players, how much time, how old you should be, on each side of the box's cover should be an industry standard. This is so useful. Well, Aaron, I guess it's time for the word. Nope. I was given a holy quest by the Lord himself, as played by Michael Mindy's. And I shall not fail, my lord. We must, nay, we will, review the expansion. Orleans Trade and Intrigue adds a multitude of new game variants to mix up your Orleaning. You're going with that? Or leaning? I'm owning it. Okay, carry on. Thank you. There are four mini expansions included. Orders, new events, new beneficial deeds, and finally the titular intrigue. Orders introduces a new way to earn victory points in the form of a deck of cards, each with a named city, the goods they desire, and how many victory points completing that order will earn you. There will always be five orders available, and to claim one, your merchant must be in the listed city, and you must have all of the listed goods. And remember that filling an order ends your turn immediately, even if you have available actions left. New events is exactly what it sounds like. Now, instead of a series of largely similar events, there are 32 random events sorted into A, B, C, and D events. Take half of each stack, put the D's on the bottom, then the C's on top of them, and so on, with the Silentium event for the first and final rounds. This introduces more uncertainty into the game, and some of the events are now even more impactful. New Beneficial Deeds is also exactly what it sounds like. It replaces the normal BD board with a different one, where now, while well, you can still gain coins or developmental track spaces for permanently retiring workers from your crew, now you have a lot more options. You can get goods, you can get citizen tiles, you can get buildings, technology tiles, even pull another worker from your bag, or move your merchant across the river. Finally, Intrigue is the reason we built a table that is too heavy to flip. This board was built for ruining friendships. Like the new Beneficial Deeds, this replaces the normal BD board, and now retiring workers can be used to swap goods, burn down trading posts, send their merchant back to Orleans, torture everybody, kill a follower randomly drawn from a player's bag, remove a player's follower from the action, putting it back in their bag and canceling their action, stealing a technology tile from any player's board, collecting taxes from all players, or push yourself ahead one space on the track, forcing someone ahead of you to move back one space. Lastly, there are three new place tiles to add to your buildings. These can be used with any or all of the other expansions or just with the base game. Also, you can mix and match the four expansions to your heart's content, but let's talk about how these expansions change the game. The orders add new strategic layer to the already multi-layer cake that is Orleans. Whether we're cutting across someone else's trading post to reach a named city, or building your own posts along the way to double your efforts, orders gives players another method to crank out victory points. The only issue we have is that neither one of us is really well versed in French geography. So without memorizing the map of central France, you'll need to check the board. And remember me saying you need a magnifying glass? The font is nice, but the printed names of the towns could stand to be a little more readable. As it is, you'll need to repeatedly inspect both the cards and the map, and it's almost impossible to do that without giving away your intentions to everyone at the table. This is a real problem when you play with the Intrigue board and your wife decides to use the kidnapping option. Love you, honey. The new events add real uncertainty to the game. Before, you knew you would have three trading days, three plagues, etc. It was just a matter of which showed up when. 
but the new events and the fact that they are all different and you only use half of them each game means you really never know what is coming next. The only issue I have with this is that if the events skew one particular way, they can really hurt anyone using that particular strategy. And as such, it introduces more luck into the game than I'd like, but I really enjoy how it changes the game up. The new events, especially the more evil ones, have a way of keeping you on your toes. The new Beneficial Deeds board has a lot more abilities that are useful early on in the game. And when we played with it, I found myself purposely getting workers for the intentions of sending them to the town hall early on. Whereas we tended to use the normal BD board to offload unneeded workers for last minute coins and citizen tiles. It gives you a new way to apply your workforce for better rewards than simply coins, which means it adds depth to the game, and I highly recommend it. Finally, Intrigue. I'll admit, Sometimes I had fantasized about burning CJ's trading posts to the ground, but I can unequivocally state that I was unprepared for the reality of having that option opened up to me. This is not a beneficial deeds board. These are all very mean things to do, and doing them means someone will quickly turn around and do them to you. As such, it has a way of slowing everybody down, but not hobbling them. And ordinarily, I would be against anything that slows the delicious process of building your engine down. But the element of deliberate chaos that is introduced by the Intrigue board, as players sadistically, gleefully burn people's houses down and send them packing to Orleans, is just exquisite. Until you're on the receiving end. This almost changes the theme of the game as France becomes a much darker place as indicated by the shifty characters seen stalking the corners of the board. This is not an expansion you want to use on first time players of the game, but fun can be had if you're all in the mood for a little evil. Now CJ, now it's time for the word. The word is savoir faire. It's a French noun that means being adaptable, adroit, knowing what to do in any situation. Damn, your word game is on another level today. Up top. With each new playthrough of Orleans, I find it more and more enjoyable because I discover new avenues of strategy that I haven't yet explored. Not all games need an expansion, but trade and intrigue add even more variety to a game that already had plenty. Orders and the new Beneficial Deeds board are both great. Intrigue I could take or leave. Orleans was already a great without having an attack mechanic, and it didn't fit well in my opinion. I wouldn't buy Intrigue by itself, but as a whole, if you own Orleans and you enjoy it, you should definitely check out Trade and Intrigue. I stonking love Orleans. This is easily one of my favorite games because it is so fulfilling to play a game where you build an engine and you get to see that engine run. So many games end before you really get to crank your engine up to full throttle, but Orleans gives you several rounds of play at max engine to churn out as many victory points as you can. And I was delighted by the Trade and Intrigue expansion. Just having the ability to mix the game up in new and interesting ways was wonderful, but the expansions really do add a lot of depth to an already deep game. I agree that the Intrigue board adds more tension than I usually like to a game, and it's not my favorite, but for me, Trade and Intrigue is a must-have, an essential purchase if you like Orleans, and Orleans is a must-have if you like Euro games. I can't recommend it enough. Aaron, Aaron, Master of Boredom. Yes, Lord? You didn't actually screw it up. Well done. But you should probably stop now. The review's starting to drag, and people are probably itching to go watch cat videos or something. It's a good idea to ask people to like and subscribe, right, Lord? Of course it's a good idea! Click this thing to subscribe, click one of these things to watch another video, and click the like and the bell down below if you don't want to incur my wrath. Oh, knock it off! And stop groveling!